Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Although Venus might have been a suitable place for life as we know it to evolve hundreds of millions of years ago, today Venus is one of the worst, most hellish environments that would be lethal to virtually any type of life form on our own planet. It's the hottest place in the solar system, by far, with crushing atmospheric pressures and sulfuric acid clouds. What could possibly survive in an environment like this? And and yet, a recent study put out by MIT and a variety of other respected institutions across the planet have recently determined that Venus may indeed be inhabited, at least by some sort of bacterial life. And not only does this life exist, it actually thrives in the Venusian atmosphere. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So, once again, we are talking about the possibility of life in the solar system, and this time in perhaps the most unlikely location of all. Even though I've discussed life before on this channel when it comes to Venus, well, this again just seems to be an impossible place for life to survive. It just has all of the wrong combination of factors here. Just can't even begin to imagine anything being able to survive the environment on Venus. You're talking about the pressures, the temperatures, the sulfuric acid in the clouds. There are so many things that would just simply extinguish virtually every type of life on our our planet and also the complete absence of any sort of liquid water. All of this seems to make the notion of life surviving anywhere on Venus a completely insane concept. And yet, evidence is beginning to mount that there may indeed be some form of life in the clouds of Venus. Not just may, there's actually a considerable amount of evidence, and more becomes apparent to us with every passing year that suggests that there is something alive in the Venusian atmosphere. Because all of the natural explanations that we've come up with for the anomalies that we have observed in the Venusian atmosphere with our instruments or even visually, well, all of these seem to come up short. There's no natural explanation that seems to account for everything that we're seeing, whereas life explains all of these things. The only problem with the biological explanation, at least thus far, is the fact that we know life can't exist on Venus. That's it. We really have no other evidence to suggest that we are not seeing biological processes in motion. And a recent study that emerged just a few days ago from some of the most prominent biologists from some of the most well-recognized universities in the world, well, the evidence is continuing to mount that in the most unlikely hellish environment that we can think of, life not only exists, but is flourishing. If you ever need a cautionary tale about the consequences of out-of-control CO2, well, Venus is definitely it. Even though Mercury is millions of kilometers closer to the Sun, the surface temperature on Venus is usually hovering around 464 degrees Celsius, whereas the maximum temperature on the daylit side of Mercury hits 430 degrees Celsius. The maximum temperature on the planet that's closest to the Sun is still over 30 degrees cooler than Venus. And this is entirely because of the thick insulating atmosphere of CO2 that Venus has that no other planet in the solar system possesses. Facts are facts, guys. CO2 traps heat. The more CO2 your atmosphere has, the more heat it's going to retain. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that Earth is on its way to becoming anything like Venus, but nevertheless, there is a direct connection between more CO2 and hotter temperatures. Simple as that, we won't say anything else about it. But that being the case, with temperatures this high and with atmospheric pressures as much as 92 times 
times that of Earth, at least at the surface, and also with an atmosphere comprised partially of sulfuric acid clouds? How the hell can anything survive there? Well, that's a very good question, and one that really needs to be investigated by biologists if we can send a probe to Venus capable of detecting life, which we have yet to do. And frustratingly, even though NASA has future missions to Venus planned, none of these missions involve any sort of life-detecting equipment because life can't exist on Venus. Everybody knows that, right? Well, according to a paper called Astrobiological Potential of Venus Atmosphere Chemical Anomalies and Other Unexplained Cloud Properties, a paper that was released just a few days ago by MIT, also the Warsaw University of Science and Technology, together with the University of Arizona, Purdue University, the Georgia Institute of Technology, the California Polytechnic University in Pomona, California, Oh yeah, and also Cambridge, it may not be that simple. According to this paper, long-standing unexplained Venus atmospheric conditions and chemical anomalies point to unknown chemistry, but also leave room for the possibility of life. The unexplained observations include several gases out of thermodynamic equilibrium. In other words, chemical compositions that simply should not be there, along with an unknown composition of large lower cloud particles and something called unknown absorbers. Let's talk about these unknown absorbers first. Now we can actually see these things in operation in the Venusian atmosphere just by looking at them. These strange darkish streaks in the Venusian atmosphere are very apparent to the naked eye, and yet astronomers cannot explain why they're there, nor can chemists. All we know is that something in the Venusian atmosphere is sucking up as much as 50% of the solar radiation that's striking the Venusian atmosphere, and no abiotic chemical can explain it. However, biological processes can. By interesting coincidence, these unknown absorbers exist at an altitude where the pressure and the temperatures on Venus are actually not all that different than conditions that exist here on Earth. The temperatures are a little bit below the freezing point, but not all that cold, and the pressures are approximately double that that exist on the surface of the Earth. That being the case, then, it's actually a perfectly habitable environment for life as we know it, and the spectral analyses of these unknown absorbers corresponds very closely to the types of absorption that we see in earthbound algaes. Does that mean that we have huge numbers of strange algaes floating about in the Venusian atmosphere? Well, let's have a look at some of the abiotic explanations. Sulfur aerosols, for example, something that we know to be extremely common in the Venusian atmosphere. Well, their radiation absorption does not correspond to what we are observing. And that seems to be the case with almost every type of abiotic chemical process that we can think of. Ammonia pyrosulfite, for example, it may contribute to the UV absorption of certain types of chemicals in the Venusian atmosphere, but it is inconsistent with what we saw with the Pioneer Venus spectroscopic observations. By the way, the Pioneer Venus, yeah, we're talking a long time ago we saw these strange phenomena taking place in the atmosphere of Venus, and yet for decades astronomers rejected these findings as being any sort of indication of anything unusual because life can't exist in the atmosphere of Venus. It's it's impossible, and so these discoveries went forgotten for a long time until recently. And when it comes right down to it, all of the abiotic chemicals that could possibly exist in the Venusian atmosphere that might be contributing to this strange phenomena, well, they're all coming up blank. The only thing that explains the spectral analysis that we have seen thus far are biomolecules and life itself. And the only drawback to this explanation is that it requires biological activity to explain the observed features of the unknown absorbers. In other words, life has to exist for this explanation to make sense. 
and life can't exist, so that means the explanation can't be valid. And it is this kind of stubborn, blockheaded thinking that has led to many discoveries, such as the discoveries of Gilbert Levin on the surface of Mars back in 1976 to be rejected as well as being any sort of indication of life existing on Mars because life can't exist there either. And it is this mode of thinking that has held us back for so long in terms of actually sending probes to these various destinations with the capability of looking for life in the first place. This is something that needs to change, and hopefully it's going to be changing soon. And by the way, what you're watching right now is a proposed manned expedition to the Venusian atmosphere that theoretically might happen before we go to Mars. And there may be very good reason to do this, especially if we find more evidence to suggest that life is indeed present in the Venusian atmosphere. And by the way, the Unknown absorbers are not the only evidence of something strange going on on Venus. In addition to that, there's something called Mode 3 particle composition. Apparently, there are particles in the lower Venusian atmosphere, and by lower, we're still talking a long ways up, about 49 kilometers or so, that were picked up by the Pioneer Venus Nephilometer. Once again, a long time ago, but it picked up very odd particles that don't correspond to anything spherical. In other words, it can't be liquid droplets, it can't be sulfuric acid, it can't be any other sort of particle that would correspond to normal atmospheric chemistry. It's too big for that. And it's not spherical, as I said before. It might actually be multicellular life. And once again, amazing things that we've known about for a long period of time and we're simply too narrow-minded to even consider the possibilities of what this might suggest. And the discoveries go on. The unusual presence of phosphines are something that's talked about a lot in the press, and this is something that was found by several different instruments over the years. Once again, Pioneer Venus was the first one to pick it up, but since phosphine usually does not exist unless life is also present, well, that possibility was of course rejected back in the 1980s, but since that time, three different telescopes have detected phosphine in the Venusian atmosphere. And that's not the only unusual chemical that's present in the Venusian atmosphere in unusual quantities. Ammonia and oxygen is present in the Venusian atmosphere. Once again, more of it than should be there based on what we think we understand about Venus's climate and atmospheric conditions. These discoveries, by the way, were made by the Soviet Venera probes, Venera 8 and Venera 14, and once again, Pioneer Venus. And once again, these discoveries were essentially dismissed or forgotten until recently. Two more mysteries are the absence of sulfur dioxide in the upper atmosphere. Now, sulfur dioxide is something we would expect to find on Venus because there's a hell of a lot of sulfur present, and also there's volcanic activity that it would explain the presence of sulfur dioxide at the surface. However, for some reason, that gas is not finding its way to the upper atmosphere. It is being consumed by some sort of process. And by the way, there are biological processes that would explain the disappearance of sulfur dioxide. That isn't the only explanation, though. Biological explanations cannot really explain all of this strange anomaly. However, they can at least be part of it. And even if they aren't, these strange chemical processes that are making the sulfur dioxide disappear really need to be looked into. Also, strangely, you have an unusual abundance of water molecules in the upper Upper atmosphere. Now, not a lot. Venus is a very, very dry place, but still, there's a lot more H2O in the upper atmosphere than there is any place else for reasons that scientists cannot figure out. In all, there are 10 unusual chemicals that are out of 
of balance with what scientists understand Venus's atmospheric composition should be. Now on Earth, virtually all the unexplained or inconsistent atmospheric compositions that we observe can be explained by biological processes. If something is strange about the atmosphere, something that you don't expect, usually some sort of life form is causing it. Now, volcanic activity can sometimes be an exception to that, but in general, on Earth, these sorts of strange chemical variations are caused by living things. So why wouldn't this be the case on Venus? Well, right now, the only explanation that we can come up with is that life can't exist there. That's it. But given the fact that this study was put out by some of the most respected institutions on the planet, obviously that notion is being seriously challenged. And given the fact that we have the unknown absorbers, strange presence of trace gases that shouldn't be there, and finally, particles that don't seem to correspond to anything that should exist in normal atmospheric chemistry, well, it should be clear to just about anybody that it is long past time for NASA to take a closer look. And the fact that they haven't done so already, well, that's one of the big reasons that I call myself the Angry Astronaut. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. All the details are in the description to give you an opportunity to check out some unique content and early releases. And if you can't support me that way, please consider checking out a video that I have linked at the end of this one called Alien Super Weapons because I got a sponsor for that one. And all you have to do is watch the video for me to benefit as far as that particular sponsor is concerned. So until NASA sends a mission to seriously look for life in the atmosphere of our nearest neighbor, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.